Hi everyone, it's Tim here again uh, with a follow-up video to one I did last week about the relative costs of um, heating your hot water using a gas boiler versus an immersion heater. Uh, so I've got some notes here because um, there were several comments that brought up some very interesting points um, that were pro are probably worth addressing um, that I didn't cover or didn't make clear in my previous video. So this follow-up video is to address some of those comments and to add a little bit of extra context onto what I was trying to say in that previous video. Uh, um, so hopefully uh, at the end of this video um, I will have answered all of those comments uh, and made it a little bit clearer as to what I was trying to trying to explain in that previous video. Uh, if you've not already seen that video um, I'll, uh, I'll have a, a link uh, up here somewhere so that you can uh, go and check that out. So there's also a playlist of all of the, the gas uh, tips gas saving tips videos that I've been doing recently, um, including uh, the, the calculations about how I worked out uh, the consumption that we require for our gas boiler versus our immersion heater in terms of how much um, we need to heat uh, to heat that hot water uh, each day. So go and check those videos out if you haven't already. Um, so probably the first thing I should uh, mention about that previous video, um, I, one of the tips I had was if you, if you have a time of day tariff, it might be cheaper for you to use the overnight rate to heat your hot water using an immersion heater instead of the gas boiler. I think probably what I didn't make completely clear is that if you're not already on a, a time of day tariff, it probably isn't worth you switching to a time of day tariff because it will probably work out more expensive for you once you factor in your daytime use of electricity. So I'm gonna go through those calculations for my own personal use, or well, for me and my wife, um, and uh, hopefully after that you will see uh, whether or not it's um, worth you switching to an overnight you know, a time of day tariff or not. And my suggestion is if you're not already on a time of day tariff, it probably isn't worth switching. So uh, I wanna make that completely clear that I, what I was trying to say in that previous video is that if you're already on a time of day tariff, it might be worth it, but if you're not, it probably isn't. Right, so that's that one. Um, so uh, another point that somebody raised was that um, if you're not on, on Octopus Go, for example, and you want to switch to Octopus Go, they currently require you to have an electric vehicle which now I think that's a really stupid requirement. Surely you would think they want to encourage as many people as possible to switch to a time of day tariff because it helps even out the grid and makes the grid more greener overall, more balanced. Um, so requiring people to have an electric vehicle I think is a, is a little bit of a step too far because not everybody's able to, uh, to get an electric vehicle, but they could get a time of day tariff if they've got a home battery storage system, for example, or solar panels, a time of day tariff is perfect for that. So not everybody's necessarily gonna to wanna to have solar panels and an electric vehicle. A lot of people do, but that doesn't mean that everybody does. So anyway, that's, that's a weird requirement. I think, I think they should roll that back, but there you go. Uh, if you're watching anyone from Octopus, please consider this as a, as a suggestion. Uh, um, however, I switched to Octopus Go a week ago uh, and they didn't ask me any details about having an electric vehicle. As it happens, I don't yet have an electric vehicle. We do plan on getting one should be arriving sometime in November, with any luck. It was supposed to already be here, but uh, due to various delays, it's not, uh, not arrived yet and it's bit, um, we won't be getting it for another couple of months. But I thought I would try switching anyway because it's probably better to switch now before all the prices go up so that I'm locked into you know, at least one year's worth of, you know, obviously it's still high, but not as high as it will be, um, tariffs uh, for the coming year. Uh, and all I had to do was check a box saying I had an electric vehicle. So if you did, did want to switch to Octopus Go and you don't have an electric vehicle, you could give it a go, you could try it out. I actually asked Octopus um, about this and they said they're only asking a sample of people who are applying about the details of their electric vehicle. So I guess I got lucky and I didn't have to enter any details about the electric vehicle and they just let me switch to, to Octopus Go without those, those details. So uh, if it's something you want to try, then, then give it a go, you might get lucky. If you're unlucky and they ask you for your details of an electric vehicle, um, I guess that's, um, that's just the way it is and uh, I don't know if they'll let you try and apply a second time or not, but anyway, something to consider. Um, so I had uh, some comments from um, a professional uh, gas uh, heating engineer and they made a very good point about um, if you wanted to run your immersion heater for your hot water in a hard water area, you might find that your immersion heater gets scaled up very quickly, the coils inside the tank. Um, and that can obviously reduce the efficiency of your immersion heater and lead it to be uh, needing to be replaced quite soon. Uh, so that is um, something that's, that's worth considering if you're planning on using your immersion heater in a hard water area, 
I believe you can get systems that will soften the water in your hot water system. Not something I know anything about, so please do consult um, a qualified heating engineer if that's something you're considering doing in a hard water area. Uh, if you're in a soft water area, you're probably fine. We're, we're lucky here, we're, we're in a pretty soft water area, so I don't anticipate we'd have any problems running the immersion heater uh, for a hot water. Um, but yeah, if you are in a hard water area, absolutely get some professional um, opinions about whether or not it's uh, a good idea to run your immersion heater or not. Um, so let's get to the, um, the maths uh, side of things. Um, as I alluded to at the beginning, uh, if you are not already on um, uh, a uh, time of day tariff, uh, it might be more expensive to switch to a time of day tariff uh, for the following reasons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the calculations for our hot water use and also our daily electricity use using both um, heating the hot water using the, an immersion uh, from uh, overnight rate on Octopus Go the, uh, plus the daytime rate um, uh, from Octopus Go and then compare that to using the standard variable Octopus tariff using the gas boiler to heat the hot water and then obviously the standard variable tariff for the electricity use during the day. So uh, let's, uh, let's get to that now. Um, so let's take the example of Octopus Go using overnight electricity to heat your hot water. So in our previous video um, I calculated that we would use five kilowatt hours per day of electricity to heat the hot water at seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour for the Octopus Go overnight tariff, which is between half past midnight and half past four. And that comes to 37.5 pence per day. Now the daily electricity usage, I estimate it's roughly between five and six kilowatt hours. So if let's take six kilowatt hours as a sort of upper limit, um, it does go up and down a fair bit, but six is a reasonable average. Now the Octopus Go daytime rate is 40.06 pence per kilowatt hour and multiply that by six kilowatt hours, that comes to two pounds 40. Add that to the 37.5 pence per, per day uh, using from the hot water heating, uh, and that comes to two pounds 78 per day. Added up over a year, that's 1,014 pounds uh, per year. That's of, as of today, my current tariff rates, um, because I'm locked in for a year now, which, um, which is something that I was keen to do um, before the prices rose too much. Uh, that's why I switched to Octopus Go last week instead of waiting until I had an electric car. So that's something to consider. If you're thinking of switching to Octopus Go, do it sooner rather than later, you know, preferably before October, because otherwise the Go tariff will then increase as well and you'll be, you'll be locked into a higher, higher rate than I've got now. Um, right, so that's the, the Go tariff using electricity for everything. So what about if I used uh, the gas boiler, but the standard variable... Um, octopus tariff in, for my electricity usage. So six kilowatt hours of hot water use is what I estimate that we would need. Uh, please again check our previous video for um, how I calculated how much, uh, how much um, gas we would need to heat our hot water. I think six kilowatt hours is reasonable. It's down to about six and a half. I think I can still pull it down a little bit further than that uh, through some various experiments I've been doing. I'll be doing a video covering those experiments later so please check out that, that um, as and when those uh, become live. Um, but at six kilowatt hours of hot water um, multiplied by the 7.36 pence per kilowatt hour for the gas rate is 44 pence per day. And again, for our daily electricity usage of six kilowatt hours multiplied by the, um, the variable rate, the octopus variable rate of 27 pence, uh, 27.86 pence per kilowatt hour um, comes, at one, comes out to one pound 67 per day. Add those together and that's two pounds 11 per day. Added up over the year, that is 771 pounds per year which is £243 cheaper than using the Octopus Go tariff, the time of day tariff. So uh, this is what I was trying to say in the previous video and I maybe didn't uh, make it um, completely explicit that if you're not already on the Octopus Go tariff, then it's probably not worth switching uh, in order to use um, overnight electricity to heat your hot water. You're probably still better off. It's still cheaper to use your gas boiler for your hot water and have a lower variable rate for your electricity during the day. Uh, so I, I maybe didn't make that super, super clear in that video and um, apologies for, uh, for that. Um, but you can see now that um, uh, uh, if you were already on Octopus Go, it might be worth you switching because you're, you'll, lose, you'll use slightly less electricity than gas to heat your hot water and the price overnight is, uh, of, of electricity on Octopus Go is comparable to the gas price. So you will end up using a little bit less energy 
Um, so that's why that's when it might be worth you using the immersion heater overnight is if you're already on a time of day tariff. So hopefully that's completely clear now. Um, right, so moving on. Uh, one other thing to consider is that um, I'm obviously completely excluding any heating costs here. I'm not, I'm not calculating how much it will cost you to heat your home during the winter. Uh, if you've got a gas boiler, it's probably still worth you using gas to heat your home instead of switching to some sort of electric heating um, because uh, electricity during the day, if you need to heat your house during the day, which is you know when most of us do want to heat our house, then that will become ex uh, significantly more expensive unless you have some form of heat pump, uh, which are way, way, way more efficient than, a, than for example, a fan heater or whatever, whatever else you might use uh, to heat your home. Uh, so I will be doing videos about our plan to switch to something like um, a heat pump heating system in the future. Uh, that's still very early days for us. Um, so probably for this winter, we're likely to be using our gas boiler for the heating. I'm not sure yet. We'll see if I can get something installed before the winter. Uh, I'm not convinced. I think it's probably less than 50-50 that we're going to get that sorted before the winter. So we're probably still going to be heating our home using, um, using gas. But if you've got a heat pump already, um, you, you know you, you know the score, you know how, how efficient they are, and um, you're probably already using some form of uh, uh, time of day tariff on, on that um, to maybe charge a home storage battery over uh, overnight and then powering your heat pump during the day. That's the sort of thing we're planning on doing. I'm not going to go into the details about that. I'll be covering that in a future video. Um, the other thing that um, is worth uh, bringing up is that um, obviously when you're running your uh, gas boiler, there is a, a pump that will, will be running to, to push the water around the system. That has a small running cost. It's not loads, maybe 20, 10 to 20 pounds a year, depending on how long your, your hot water is running for. Um, it's a small cost relative to the rest of the, um, the cost of, of running your boiler. So I just wanted to mention it, that uh, it, does, it, does, um, ha it will have a small impact, but probably not the dominant impact. If you want to do the full calculations on that, please feel free to do that yourself. Um, another point is that if you have solar panels, for example, and battery storage, uh, then uh, your daily use of electricity is probably covered for, uh, for a good chunk of the year through um, your solar panels and battery storage. So that will change the calculations that I did earlier. So please, if you've got that sort of system installed, um, you know, again, do your own calculations. You'll probably come to a different conclusion. Um, it's almost certainly going to be cheaper for you to, uh, to heat your hot water overnight and um, using electricity and then, you know, powering your home for the rest of the day using solar panels and battery storage and all that stuff. So one last thing to consider actually is if you completely get rid of all the gas supply to your house, if you've electrified your heating system using heat pumps or whatever, and you are using uh, immersion heaters for your hot water, then getting rid of your gas supply uh, is completely feasible then, and you no longer have a standing charge. So that's worth considering, uh, it can add up certainly over time. Uh, and you, if you don't have a gas boiler, you don't have any gas boiler maintenance or servicing costs. Uh, so you probably have other servicing costs and maintenance for other things like your whatever heating system you replace it with. So maybe that's not so important, but um, something to bear in mind as well. Um, one final thing to, uh, to consider. Uh, now, I'm sorry that this has been a, probably a bit of a rambly video, a bit, um, a bit of a hodgepodge of things, um, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I addressed all of the comments from the previous video because uh, it was a, quite a focused video just on the running costs um, for heating your hot water and it, uh, there were all of these other things that obviously are worth bearing in mind but um, I didn't necessarily cover properly in that video so hopefully I've covered those now and um, you're uh, better able to understand uh, the relative benefits of, um, of a gas boiler versus an immersion heater for your, for your hot water. Uh, last thing to iterate absolutely uh, once more if you're not already on a time of day tariff it probably isn't worth switching you should probably still consider heating your hot water using your boiler just to be absolutely finally clear on that one. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you got something out of that video uh, and uh, it clarified any points that weren't uh, clear before. Uh, if you're interested in um, getting rid of gas entirely like we are, we're planning on doing that over the next few years, uh, please continue watching these videos. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already uh, because I will be covering in detail um, all of the plans on how exactly how we're gonna do that. Uh, it's going to take us a few years, it's going to cost a fair bit of money. I'm hoping, I've done the calculations and it should work out cost effective over the long run, probably 10 to 15 years. Might be quicker though if uh, you know gas prices continue to go up. Um, 
but uh, we shall see, um, and I'm as interested as you are to see how it works out, probably more so actually. Uh, and uh, yeah, please um, stick around for those sorts of videos coming over uh, the next months and years. Uh, the, the whole idea of this channel was to uh, show what we're doing personally in our lives, uh, to give an example to people um, to, that maybe are thinking of doing something similar, to show what's possible and maybe the relative costs and, uh, and benefits or draw, uh, down sides of, uh, of doing what we're trying to do. So um, yeah, if that's interesting to you, uh, stick around and uh, I'll have plenty more videos coming for you soon. Uh, I'm continuing to run the experiments on, um, on uh, our current gas boiler, uh, heat hot water system um, gradually you know reducing the amount that we're using and uh, I will uh, show the results of those experiments uh, in a future video hopefully within the next couple of weeks uh, so yeah look forward to that one and um, I'll see you in uh, future videos thanks for watching